Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. Our gracious God and Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And we sing his praises. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you call and appoint us to proclaim the good news of your Son, despite our sins and weaknesses. Purify us by your grace, remove our uncertainties, and work through us to fill the nets of your kingdom with those lost in the darkness of death. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. 
And here Isaiah shares with us his calling to be God's prophet. This is our sermon text for today as well. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. The word of the Lord. Join me as we sing Psalm 67. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10. Here Paul is appealing to all of us, all believers, to share the gospel with all people. 
Paul writes, For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. The word of the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts, all day long. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to Luke chapter 5. Here Jesus calls his first apostles. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Join me as we sing, Hark the Voice of Jesus Christ, in 745.
In the name of our Savior Jesus, who has forgiven us from sin and made us his own, my dear Christian friends. It is amazing that in a country where we have been truly blessed, there can still be poverty. One of those areas is Appalachia. Maybe some of you have even driven through there. People who drive through will see tar shacks, little bungalows, cabins where the poor live, and see children shabbily dressed with swollen stomachs from malnutrition and hunger. It's just amazing what you find. And these people are poorly educated and they are usually treated medically by government agencies so they don't even have the things that you and I expect and have. But now I want you to picture another scene. Picture a black, shiny car. that comes into that area and a tall man gets out of the car in a fancy New York suit, walks up to the man of the house, that bungalow, and speaks to him for a few moments and then hands him an envelope. In that envelope is a check for over $2 million. Now, what do you think that man's going to do? Well, he ran down the road. He couldn't wait to tell his neighbors and friends the good news. He just couldn't keep it to himself. He had to do that. We know some other people like that. We, we know the shepherds, right? They heard the good news about the birth of the Savior Jesus from the angels. And they, in turn, first went to see what they had been told, namely the manger and Jesus in it. And then they did what you and I would expect after they saw the Savior. They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. They just couldn't help it. They had to share it. And how about us? We have heard some wonderful news. We have been rescued from spiritual poverty. And we have now a reason to rejoice. We have a joyful message to share with everyone, with family, with our friends, our co-workers, our acquaintances. It's the saving word of God. Someone else who understood this gospel was Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet. In our text, he was serving the people of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, under the reign of King Uzziah. King Uzziah, he died around 739 B.C. He was a good king. One of the 
list of good kings that Judah had. But at his death, that was the beginning of the end. It was the beginning of a long downhill slide for the people of the kingdom of Judah. They no longer had someone who was going to lead them well. So God called, God called Isaiah to be their spiritual leader and to proclaim repentance and the Lord's will to an indifferent and half-interested people. In Isaiah's day, they didn't have the whole word of God. So they, God sent his prophets to spread the good news, to share the word of God. In our text, Isaiah tells us of his being called into his prophetic office. He was called by a vision. And in that vision, he saw the Lord in his heaven, sitting on his throne high above everyone else, and the angels singing praises to God. And of course, Isaiah was called by God, even though he was a sinful man, to be his servant and proclaim repentance and the saving gospel to every everyone he met. Isaiah was well aware of his shortcomings. In fact, listen to what he says. Woe to me! I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. All sinners have to express their unworthiness before the perfect and holy God. That's what you and I do every week when we come together for worship, isn't it? We too recognize our unworthiness before the true God and we confess our sins before him. God forgave Isaiah. Without his asking, without any deserving on his part. And what does God, our holy God, do for us? He does the same thing. He forgives us. We don't deserve it either. You know, back in Isaiah's day, there, the altar was a symbol of the plan that God had from eternity to offer up his son, the Lamb of God, on that altar for the forgiveness of every human soul. In our day, the empty cross is a reminder of the completed sacrifice that Jesus made for us and for every human soul. The holy God called Isaiah, a sinful man, to proclaim repentance and the message of salvation to other sinners. When he heard God's call, what did he say? Here am I. Send me. He was so moved by God's grace that he was willing to be God's messenger of truth and salvation. His responsibility was to lead God's people to trust in God alone and rely only on him. By the power of God, Isaiah became a great prophet of God. And he proclaimed the word of God wherever he went. In the same way God has called you and me to be like 
Isaiah to proclaim the truth of God's word. Now, will we be like that Appalachian man running down the road, shouting, you know, thanks for this wonderful blessing? Will we? Will we be so moved by God's love and grace that we just can't help but say, here am I, send me. Isn't it amazing that God chose sinful people whom he forgave through Jesus Christ to share this marvelous gospel message with other sinners? God used sinful people to do this. Sinful people like Abraham and Moses and Isaiah and the other prophets. He used the shepherds. He used John the Baptist. He used the apostles. And now he uses you and me. My friends, he gives us a message of joy and hope and peace. A message of salvation for every human soul. A message that has blessings attached to it, not only for today, but forever. You and I have a glorious privilege to spread the word. And you and I have this opportunity to share the gospel message with those in Waukesha. But we also have the privilege of joining with our fellow uh, Wells brothers and sisters in supporting and sending that gospel message to 44 countries. Countries like Africa, Asia, Latin America, Europe. And we have been invited I use that term correctly. We have been invited to share the gospel in Vietnam. We have been invited to start a mission in London, England. That's amazing. Take up the banner of the Lord. Sing praises to our saving God. Tell of His great love for the souls of mankind. Tell of the sacrifice Jesus made so that we could be forgiven, that we could believe in him, so that we could have the certainty of eternal life in heaven, and so that we could have the privilege to share the good news. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds faithful to Jesus and his word, and share it willingly and gladly. Amen. Would you please join me now in confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in the prayer of the church. 
Almighty God and Father, thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessings rest on planting and harvesting, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all those who are in sorrow or need sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. We especially pray, Lord, for, first of all, for Sandy Dahl. That's the sister of Wanda Weedman. She has been diagnosed with cancer. Lord, use all that you can do to help her in her treatment of the cancer, to use that for her good and benefit, and may it also serve to uh, help her to do away with that cancer as only you can do. Lord, continue to help her to focus on you as the one who is in control of all things. And we pray this in your name. We also pray, Lord, for the Scherf families. At the sudden death of Harlow Scherf, he was the father of Steve Scherf and the brother of Mick Scherf. Harlow here, was raised here in Waukesha. Dear Lord, we ask your blessing upon the families. Keep them in your love and care. Comfort them in this loss, but remind them again that by faith in you alone, they will have a tremendous reunion in heaven with Harlow. May your word strengthen and keep them. And dear Lord, we are grateful that you have brought Ron Falter home, and will continue his recovery there. Lord, bless him in his recovery. Help him to focus on you as well, and never let his faith falter at all. For Lord, you are the one who is in control. And dear Lord, we pray for all our families who have members who are recovering from COVID or from any other health issues. We ask your blessing upon them, comfort them as well with your loving care, and help their family members to recover well. And dear Lord, we give thanks for all the families that are returning to worship and join in fellowship with our Mount Calvary family. Continue to bless them in that way. Draw all our members back here and for fellowship and love as we center around your precious word. Lord, bless us in every way. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who lo have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors, console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Yes. 
Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. And now the ushers will bring forth our offerings of love to the Lord and place them on the altar. We join in singing hymn 907, How Shall They Hear Who Have Not Heard? Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we also pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with peace and give you his peace. Amen. Please join me as we close 
with sent forth by God's blessing, hymn 932. Again, good morning to everyone. Thank you for letting me serve you today, and thank you for joining me in worship as we praise God and hear his marvelous, marvelous word, which gives us the reason to go forward. He has called us as well, so let us all say, here am I, send me, and may he bless you as you do that, and may God give you a great day. Go in the Lord. 